well deserved. Thank you for that. And I'm, I'm excited uh, about this uh, this recruiting class, the 2025 recruiting class, and obviously we'll have another um, another signing day in February where we can probably we'll see if, how many guys will sign there. Um, recruiting is always in, in a uh, in a daily thing for us, and so um, you know when, once we uh, Get get our guys and, and feel like they we've had we've we've got our, our depth and and uh, got the numbers right, uh, you know we'll be able to kind of solidify about when when the enrollment will take place. A good number of these guys, I think eight of them are going on missions first, um, but we're really excited about the group, excited about the uh, their families, and excited for where they come from. They're a great fit to our program, not just on the field. I think they they do some wonderful things on the field. But uh, it's all off the field, and what they're what they're about, uh, their vision and their the um, their goals are in alignment with what uh, we are as a program, and, and not definitely what we are as a an institution. So uh, I think these young men have have done an amazing job and on the field and represent themselves in the classroom, and and um, they're going to be great ambassadors for our program. And I'm, I'm excited to get them you know on board. And now that we recruiting is a little different now than it has been because. Um, a lot of commitments happen earlier, so you get guys that have been there, and it's just a matter of uh, just signing, signing, uh, and making it official. But most of the guys, I think, recruiting has kind of been fast forwarded a little bit, which is fine. And um, we were able to recruit these guys for, and they've been a lot of, most of them been committed for a long time. And um, it's just been nice to be able to already have a relationship. I think back in the day, we would be on the phone uh, till you know early in the morning because uh, just trying to talk to guys and trying to figure out you know what's the best fit for them and what decisions they're going to make and then you have all those the hats choosing ceremonies all that stuff this this is a I like the way it is now I like the this uh, less drama let's just get the guys announced and let's get them working on on becoming a cougar um, but before we I answer any questions you guys have I just I want to first express my appreciation and gratitude to everybody that's been involved in recruiting. Uh, I don't think our recruiting department gets enough credit, and and uh, I don't think they really care for it, but they work really hard. Um, and, and everything they do with official visits, unofficial visits, all the content they put out there, even people that put our, our stuff on social media, I think that's that's uh, everything plays into recruiting. And so when you look at uh, what's done with the, with the university, from the faculty to the staff, to everyone that, that – promotes the brand of BYU and that promotes definitely BYU athletics and BYU football specifically, I hope they know how much we appreciate them because they're the ones that actually make the recruiting uh, process a lot easier. So uh, there's a bunch of people that have spent countless hours and, and, and sacrificed a bunch of their time in their life to, to our recruiting, and I hope they know how much we appreciate and love them. And then definitely want to express my gratitude to our staff. Uh, to our coaches that, that that are doing the the daily contact, uh, finding these guys. I, I think the recruiting for us is, is a filtering process. We want to see if they're going to fit our program in a lot of different ways, and if they see if they have the potential that can accomplish a lot of things uh, as a person and as a football player. So uh, they've done a great job at, 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 at you know finding these young men that that want to be at BYU for the right reasons, and we look forward to to their um, mentoring and, 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 and coaching them to achieve a lot of their goals on and off the field. And so, uh, but I want to also thank the, uh, the fans. They make it easy when these guys come to our games and they go to uh, other sporting events at BYU, any activities at BYU on campus, it makes a difference, especially their interaction with the fans. So thank you to all Cougar Nation for uh, being such a, a, a huge asset for us in recruiting. And, uh, Last but not least, I want to thank the, 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 the players um, for what they do is, uh, and, and how they recruit for us and um, just the connection that they have to each other. It's, it's, it's a, the fact that they, they live the life that you want to see and they don't do it for just the cameras. They actually, our, our recruits get to see it in real life. They get to see it with their own eyes that there's a great connection here and it's something that they really want to be a part of. And so uh, that doesn't work unless you have wonderful young men on the team and they've done a great job in, in making this a, a destination that people want to be a part of regardless of their religious affiliation and their background. So um, looking ex we're looking forward to our bowl game and our prep and looking forward to great things in the Big 12. And uh, these young men will be a big part of what, we what, what we're trying to accomplish as a, as a football program. So thanks, guys. What questions do you have? Let's start with questions from um, Jared Lloyd, then Jay Drew, followed by Sean Walker. 
Bonnie, first of all, congrats on the uh, Hall of Fame induction, Polynesian Football Hall of Fame. That's that was awesome to see that news this morning. Um, but talking about signing day, both uh, both Jay and, and A Rod emphasize that that this program is going to focus on bringing in high school athletes first and then filling holes with the transfer portal. That's different than some other institutions in the country. That's a different approach. Is that something that's been kind of intentional um, um, for your program? And, and why have you chosen to go that route? Well, I think for for us, we can kind of the, – the transfer portal is hard because it's, it's, it's such a – a, um, a fast pace of recruiting and and how, how do you really get to know somebody and if you look at the, the the majority of people that we bring in even through the portal there's already a connection from before and so one, one thing that we have to focus on is the culture of the team protecting the culture um, I think a lot of times people would look at talent and say okay that's the overriding um, factor that you want to be that you want to have a, that you want to be ahead of everybody else but uh, talent Talent doesn't just get you wins. You you still need culture. You still need strategy. You need all those things involved. And I think it, when they're formidable is when they're in high school. And and when we can re- develop develop a relationship and see how what they're about is when we start recruiting these young men, have them in camps, have a connection to them. And um, I'm not saying that we can't have connection to, to to newbies. They people that just show up and and we get to know them in recruiting. And that in the, in the portal that takes a little bit more. Finding out more about a person's character and who they, you know, and you have to do a lot of reference checking in that one. But uh, with with the high school recruiting, you can't really fake it. I think you got to you get the guys that you know and, and what they can accomplish, and then um, you can really work them into they. They're a great fit. It's 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 they're they're adding to the culture. They're not just coming in here and feeding off of it. And that that's uh, you can get that done a lot a lot easier and a lot better in high school. NIL has also changed the game, and A-Rod emphasized that it's not going away. It's something you've had to adapt to. How, in your view, has it positively impacted recruiting, just the fact that the money stuff is, is out there and, and has an impact? Well, I think, I mean, NIL, I, 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 it all depends how you structure NIL and how, how you approach it with rev share, things like that. Um, I think for us, the focus isn't on the money. It's on what we're trying to get done as a football program. Um, and so you have to have different ways of working with the money. But I, I'm not the money guy. So I, I'm, this is this is not my job. I'm not. That's why we hired a general manager. So he can be the guy that you go to that can kind of organize that. And, and part of that is for us to show some, responsi- some responsibility in, in, in um in, in finances and so educating them by helping them with budget understanding taxes things like that and, and the best way to do it is have a general manager and uh, guys on the staff that can help them budget but also plan for the future so I, I know there's a lot a huge amount of money that's coming in through rev share uh, we're going to encourage our young men to save that for the future put it off to you know think about your future and um don't worry about the instant gratification of cashing out. I know that a lot of people are just doing a cash out and then just saying, hey, just this is the money, we'll give you all the money. That That's how can we be coaches that actually want to help them in every part of their life, but then not help them in the finances. So we have to we have to be have a great structure and, and a plan in place. And it's taken us a long time to get to where we're at. And I think we're in a good position. But the next the next step is, is the the is the general manager and the rev share and educating our players and they can go get that training from him and from others that are on staff and and you know so i'm i think people said that i've not i haven't embraced nil enough I'm like, are you kidding everybody's going to embrace it nil if there's if they have the money to make it work my job is i'm embracing the young men and i want them to have the money work for them and not them work for the money that's it's the culture that we're trying to protect and um you know, those of you that know anything about it, it's like money can change relationships really quickly, and you see it how it's done it even in college football today. So we're, we're not going to let that be a distraction to us, but we will definitely have a plan to help these young men. But really think about the future. Go ahead, Jay. Bonnie, um, I know you said six, something like 16 of the guys committed before the season started, but uh, I'm just wondering what effect – on recruiting has your success this season had uh, and will it maybe be manifest more next season or next recruiting class um, yeah I, th- I think 
maybe yeah i think next class definitely does it the but even last year when when we didn't have i mean it's it just not a it's not a conditional thing recruiting is not just oh you know you strike while the iron's hot and now you've won games and so now you get to you get to get the better recruiting classes we we still need the the right guys the right fit that's that's our goal get the right the right fit to the school and uh, they, they want to be about their, their, what they want is aligned exactly with what the school is all about. And that's what we, that's what we do in recruiting. Um, yeah, I, I feel, I mean, I, I feel like the, the, the relationships that we have with them and the success that we have on the field, that, that, may, get, that may get some attention and may, might get some eyes turned our way. But it's, it's not the, the factor that we're relying on to be the huge, you know, the huge uh, carrot dang, that's dangling in front of all these recruits. The, the 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 key is I want them to see being a part of this team. I want I want recruits to watch our team and say I want I want to be on that sideline. I want to be in that jersey and I want to play for those fans. And that's what that's what we're trying to focus on. Okay, Sean Walker and Mitch Harper. This is a little bit of a big picture question, Coach, but um, A Rod I kind of referred it to you a little bit earlier as well, so I'll, I'll sort of launch the grenade, I guess, but. How much of a did you guys sort of keep an eye on, or maybe just even keep in the back of your mind a little bit that that new 105 man roster? I guess it's a cut down right now. When you were looking at this recruiting class, and not just recruiting that. I mean, it's a little different to recruit to a 120 man roster, and if a guy can make that versus you know 20 or so if your spots or whatnot. Did was that kind of in the back of your mind with some of these guys? I know obviously it's a fairly recent thing too. Well, I, I think the the recruiting classes are going to have to change because of that. So you can't really just sign a bunch of guys, and 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 for for us too, it's it's the the roster the roster is, is limited. But recruiting for scholarships is still the eighty five. If a school chooses to add all one hundred and five on scholarship, they can. Um, but when you go from one hundred and twenty three for us to one hundred and five, um, you take eighteen guys away. It's hard. It's hard to think about that when you're. When you're planning, and this is every school has to, has to drop their roster to 105, so the portal is going to be a very busy place um, in the next next few weeks, and then also again later on in April, and 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 um, you know we the portal's been it's, it's there's a lot of people that's kind of been left in the portal that didn't have a place to go, and I imagine that there's going to be a huge. Um, there's going to be a huge amount of, uh, enormous amount of young men, that just the numbers, that they're going to have to find a home. And that's, that's, that's a struggle. I think you've heard a lot of coaches talk about it, that, that it changes everything. But from, from my perspective, it changes everything, even in planning for spring ball, planning for fall camp and planning through the season because you can't replace. Um, I mean, the numbers just get, they dwindle. And so then your, your scouting team, your scout team is going to be, uh, down a little bit, and so I, I think the number it's going to change the game definitely. We just have to be on top of it and, and make it make a, a plan that's going to help us uh, find some kind of competitive advantage, and that's that's what the goal is. But right now, we don't have to have that roster down until fall of, of 2025. Um, but you, you're going to eventually have to get there, so you, you're going to start making some decisions as you start getting closer to that time and. Uh, it, it's, it, it sucks, man, because you, you, we, we've needed a lot of those. I, I think of guys that are in that that you would be missed out in that spot on this team, guys like Tanner Wall and Crew Wakeley and um, you know guys like Tyler Algier and, and some amazing players that have been in that those 106 to 123 spots. You know, so um, that that's going to be difficult to replace, and that that's a that's in every every team has to deal with that. Go ahead, Mitch. Kalani, uh, I wanted to ask you about the the general manager role. What, um, how long has that been kind of in the works that you wanted to have that position on your staff, and and what were some of the uh, you know the, the what you wanted out of the person that you ultimately ended up hiring in, in that spot? Yeah, I wanted it since fin- since the finances became a deal, like NIL and all that stuff, and so I'm glad that we we have it in place. We just didn't know. Um, all the details of it because it was going to be fluctuating quite a bit and now that the NCAA has kind of decided on, on rev share and kind of where NIL is going to be in, in, in 2025 
uh, we have to be ahead of it and we have to be planning according to whatever is going to be out there and uh, Dave's done a great job at, at he's been in touch with everything but he's also has that experience as, uh, his, with his, his background in law that um, he's, he's, he's dealt with a lot of things and has interacted with the NCAA he can kind of can kind of um, predict and, and and see the what's going to happen in the in the near future and also plan for for the future which is what we want him to be with our players and I'm not I'm not great at that stuff so um, I can what I can do is I can have a lot of people around me that that know it and and Dave, Dave's one of them he, he's going to be able to be in a position to help these young men talk about money and discuss the different options and but also look at the the, the plan that we can have for them and He's put together a very enticing um, schedule and plan for our players, and, and, and he's meeting with them and talking with them already, and it's stuff that I don't have to worry about. So I, it makes things a lot easier for me. I can just worry about coaching the team and, and, and going through what we're doing here. But we're, we're aligned in, in, in how we see things. We have the same vision that, that um, although the, there, there is going to be money, the, f- the focus will not be money-driven. It's going to be on, on opportunities to that are here and, and, and the experience of being a, a football player in this program and then like I said really understanding how money can really help you in the future that, that's where I think Dave's going to be the biggest help for us next we'll take questions from Kevin and then Jared now that you've had this class signed is there any position that you think is kind of a position of need still uh, whether that's kind of adding on to this class or the transfer portal in the coming weeks um, does any place stand out to you on this roster I think a lot of different coaches have different strategies for how they're going to build their roster for 2025. Uh, I like what we're about. I, I, I'm not going to make statements and say we're never going to go do this. And we're it's like, even though we have a good number of high school recruits that we have here, we have to be open to all of it. I, I, I have to be open to any players that can feed to our, our our needs with depth and also talent. I mean, we we're always open to bring good players in here, but. They have to be a great fit. They have to be great, a great fit for our culture, for our school, and, and their vision has to be aligned with ours. And so if they want to be part of this team, um, it's not just only football. They, they, they always have to play some, some high level of football, but they, I want to see if they can bring a lot to the table with, with, uh, you know, with their personality, their character. And, um, and, and the relationships that they're going to have with, with their teammates. So that, that uh, we, we, if you look at it, a lot of people didn't really expect much from our team because we had a lot of the same guys coming back and we added a few pieces. And, and so, but it just goes to show that if you can, you have a system, you have a culture, you build on it, it'll all work out and, and, and you build it around a connection that these guys can have around together with each other. You know that the concept of love does does work, and the concept that we Im- implement the gospel in in our culture and in our football program it, it does work. But it doesn't. You don't. You don't uh, do it by. It's not just. It's all happy go lucky stuff. You know what I mean? Like we hold each other accountable. We're really we really focus on our guys doing things the right way. Is it perfect? No, but there's definitely high level of accountability and and uh, responsibility for what they rep- represent. And um, sometimes you put these huge expectations on them, but they have to meet your standard. And that's, that's what we're trying to get done with this program. And it, it, it's working nicely right now. Go ahead, Jared. Well, honey, we just had senior day, which was a chance to, to recognize you know, the accomplishments of that group, group of individuals at the end of their careers. And here we are just a few days later, you know, lauding these 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 young men who are making that transition from one point in their careers to now the being part of the BYU program. How fun is it every year when you get this opportunity with the potential of these guys and and the hope of seeing them through the next you know four, five, six, seven years, whatever it is, you know, as they 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 make this transition. Yeah, it's a lot of fun, and then you see them like when they came, they come in as a high school, uh, you know coming right out of high school graduating or, or guys that have gone on missions and they show up and, right after their missions and they're still kind of, you know, they definitely don't have a tan and they definitely don't have, uh, they're, just, they're, just, they're just not even developed yet, you know, and then to see them um, get older, get bigger, stronger, develop their, their identity that they're already on a path to, to getting there. That It's like they, they, I'm just really proud that I get to be a part of their progress from a young man to an adult and then that they became the men 
that their mom and dad wanted them to become. And so, and then along the way, they, they've been able to pick up some amazing relationships. And uh, some of them got married, some of them have, have babies on their own. And so you see this transition. And then, if I'm being honest, I, I can't believe that, um, that I get to be a part of it. And so I, I love uh, where I'm at. I love being connected to them and seeing the, the, them go through different phases in their life. And, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting because I, I just, you know, we had some players that, that that had children for the first time, and Hinkley Ropati is one of them. And I just keep think, thinking, like, oh, man, it's come a long way, you know. And he's had some adversity in his life with injuries and loss of loved ones, and and now he's he's uh, I see him as a father, and that's one of the it's one of the proud things that I get to I get to see. It's like I get to see him make touchdowns and things like that, but. I get to see him holding his baby girl, and that that means a lot to me. And that that, uh, and and it's one of those things. I I might just wait till you have this baby. You can't you can't wait. I mean, it's gonna be. There's nothing like it. And and because um, I remember when I when that happened to me, and so I get to see this from from the best seat in the house. And then I get to stand on the sideline and see them make plays or make mistakes. And and I get to be there with them through it all. So it, it's it's a it's a fun ride. I'm, I love it. We have, one final, we have time for one final question from Mitch Harper. Kalani, you noted that you're expecting eight guys to go on, on missions first. Out of the, the ten remaining guys, how many are going to enroll in January for, at mid-year and, and compete in, in spring ball? Uh, there's quite a number. Do you, do you have that number, Brett? That's right. Oh, yeah. So um, we're, we're thinking four. Well, six. So we're thinking six will probably be mid-year enrollees, but – we're still working through that with um, some of them are trying to get their schoolwork done and then trying to get admitted and then there's like a, a this like a block of time that they can get it done and then if they can't get it done then they would have to enroll in spring and so that's kind of it, 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 that's the difficulty is getting them here but I, I think we can I think I think we're, we're planning on six maybe a couple more we'll see but but six for sure and then with with um, with the transfer portal, you know, we, we it's always with the, the admissions, things that we have to work with. So I'm I'm really thankful that, that um, BYU admissions and BYU uh, administration has really been helpful with us in, in the timing of all of that. So I don't know exactly what's going to happen to the portal. I just know that we love our team currently where it's at, but we have to take a look at – we have a responsibility to take a look at, at who those that can fit – BYU um, and then fit our culture and I think that's we'll see what that looks like but it, it's it's going to be kind of wild right now with the with the portal with with the roster going down to 105 and with every school having to do that and and when they do that is going to be interesting okay thanks everyone for joining us today um, coach really appreciate your time and congratulations on your signing class appreciate it guys go kooks